you are listening to the B I don't know. Where do I see it on my screen so that I can? Oh, it says hosting right there. Oh, there you go. Baby, that's how you do it. What up, Clint Esposito? What's up? How you doing? Vic is funny. I'm good. How are you? Listen, we're going to start right off the gate. There's two viewers. What a hard hitting question. Yeah. I'm going to run deep. (laughs) All right. All right. We're just going to get serious. This might be a little controversial. (laughs) Some people may not, you know, whatever, but how much do you miss me on social media? <laughs> Actually, uh, I saw you post on a couple of things and I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? I didn't post anything. Get out of here. I did? Yeah, didn't. Well, I saw you on LinkedIn. Oh, I haven't been on You LinkedIn. haven't been? No, then I, haven't I just haven't been on there and that was the old one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been on there. But there all. was something you posted in an event you're doing or something, didn't you? It had to be Maybe auto. it's just stuff that's coming up. Uh, older stuff. I have this app. I've seen I, you once or twice that I'm like, what are you doing? I almost text you. <laughs> so I was like, what are you I doing on here? Get out of here. <laughs> Exposed a fraudulent fucking break. <laughs> You've been hiding this whole time, waiting to see if anybody's talking shit about you. Yeah. Just casually sliding in people's DMs. No, I haven't been on anything, bro. I've been cold turkey. Almost up. <clears throat> and you quit the marijuana? Ooh, what are you turning over man. a new leaf or what? No, bro, that's actually crazy. That was um, that's been a long time coming. You're about to get your life together and quit comedy. No, that's <laughs> that's not gonna happen. No shot. No, bro, I just needed to relax. I needed to relax. I wasn't. Ha- I didn't have a good relationship with the pot. I was using oh, yeah. it wrong, all wrong. Like everything was just fucked up. All right, I ran. Well, I ran a credit card bill up because I used money I was supposed to use. For the credit card on weed. That'll happen. That's a fucking problem. (laughs) That's fucking. And then just like. That's a self-control problem, not a weed problem. Well, no, but it's not the weed. It's the fact that like the weed was an outlet for my behavior. You know what I'm saying? Like instead of using weed to enhance my life, I'm using it to like cover up parts of my life that I don't want to deal with. Like emotionally. Like I was just heavy usage putting myself in unnecessary positions where i'm like risking my freedom again and it's all like it was just all for nothing and then the last couple days i've had this mushroom trip come back to me i i I did a um i did mushrooms on new year's eve Mm -hmm. right and i had a bad like i didn't have a bad trip i just threw up a lot and then Mm -hmm. my face broke out and shit but I had this experience outside when I first started tripping. I went outside and I sat by myself and I was sitting, you know, where my, right in my, like the little patio area. And in my patio area, it's like a little square. And then I have the light that's on the, the wall and I'm sitting in this little square and I'm fucking tripping. Who else is eating mushrooms with just you? Just me. Okay. I'm just by myself. Is my it? uncle's here, but he's in the, in, the, in the room. He didn't eat anything, uh-huh. right? So I'm sitting there. How much did you eat? Whole eighth. Yeah. Pretty much like close straight. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just straight. That's why you One threw up. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's a lot. And I had Chinese food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was bound to happen anyway. And fucking, and I'm sitting there in the chair and I'm looking at, it's dark. It's like 11 o'clock at night. It's pitch black except for the light. And in the light, it's like a perfect square of where I'm sitting. Like, you know how the, the, the fucking thing covers it? So the light is like that, and I'm sitting there, and I'm and I'm looking, and the dark is like waves, and it's trying to come in, and then it retracts, and it's trying to come in, and it retracts, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, look at that darkness trying to get me. I'm like, the darkness is trying to get me, and then I look up, and I look up at the light, 
And I'm like, the light's not letting the darkness in. And I have a video of myself because I started video of myself. Like, yeah, you always up. think that's a good idea until you watch it later <laughs> when you're fucking not tripping. Bro, and was, all of a sudden you're like, what the? Who the fuck was that? I, del- I was. <laughs> bro, I deleted it. I, I was like horrified at the way I looked, right? And I'm looking at my, I'm looking at the thing and I'm like, <clears throat> I'm like, and I'm laughing, right? And I'm like, the darkness can't get in if I keep the light on. I'm like, and I just kept saying that, to, and I'm laughing like, hysterically. The darkness can't get in if I keep the light on, and I kept saying that. And then I like, I you know, the next day I woke up, I didn't really think much of it. And then like a couple of days later, I saw the video again, and then I'm like, oh, the darkness can't get in if I keep the light on. I'm like, that, all right. And and like like the next couple of weeks, that just kept playing. It kept playing, and then. Like two weeks, like last week, President's Day, the Sunday before, no, President's Day, I ran out of weed, right? And I was just like, all right, I'm, I'm the here. The darkness. Yeah, no, no, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, this is it, right? I'm here where I have, I don't, I don't have money. I don't have any spare money to, to buy weed, so we're going to have to fucking eat it. Then Tuesday, I come home and I'm a fucking emotional wreck. Like, just everything washed over me. Like, I'm fucking crying for no reason. My wife's like, what's the matter with you? And I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I have no idea. I'm just like You think you haven't erect. touched those feelings because you've just fucking stayed high enough to not address them? For the them. longest, exactly. And I, I, think, I think I do, I think I use <clears throat> weed because I have, like, undiagnosed fucking mental issues. You know, I think we all do. Yeah, the problem like, is not everything needs to be diagnosed. Yep. <laughs> yep. But, this, but shit can get real dark for me, like really fucking dark. That's scary. And that and like that shit clicked on me like last week. I was like, the fucking darkness can't get in if I keep the light on. And I don't got the fucking light on right now. So what does that mean to you ultimately? I understand the saying, but now how are you implementing that in your life as far as the not weed and stuff like that? Because the darkness comes from me not confronting issues and from me burying them and not putting any light on them. We're men. That's what we do. Exactly. (laughs) But that shit, I think there's a difference though. I think there's like, like there's like the men shit where you're quiet, you don't complain and you do your shit, right? Like that man shit. I agree with like, you got your fucking problems. Like I didn't fucking tell my wife. I was gonna not going to be able to pay my credit card. I figured out a way to fucking get the money, and I'm going to pay my credit card. Like, that's it. You figure shit out. You went back to stripping. No. <laughs> <laughs> I sold my ass. $20 blowjobs, ladies and gentlemen. Just, I get them. I don't get them. <laughs> no, I, um, I sold my Bitcoin. I forgot I had Bitcoin, so I was like, fuck it. It'll get me from this time, and I'll figure some shit out. But I, um, what were we talking about? The light and the oh, darkness. Oh, um, like the darkness, just the the. Right. So, what the darkness is the um your uh lack of better word issues, whatever yep. the fuck you want to call it. Yep. So, what's the light then? The light is me being like aware of it, vigilant, and not the hiding it, like not trying to cover it up. So, like I feel like I, I feel like just right now I don't want to smoke. Like right now, I feel yeah. like I have to get some shit together and fucking fix myself so yeah. that I can come back and have a fucking normal relationship with like weed. Like I don't, I was talking to on the last podcast I did with Jesse, Jesse said some shit that stuck with me too, that made me really go. Like at first I was just like, I'm going to take a break for a little while, fix my finances and then come back. But then I was talking to Jesse and Jesse said some shit. Jesse was just like, I don't like being addicted to things. I don't like when something controls you and like makes you alter your behavior to satisfy it rather than the other way around. You know what I mean? Like that's slippery slope though. Cause we all do it with comedy. Yeah. But that's, you're working, but towards, it's being productive. So it's different. Yeah, like you're working towards a, <clears throat> like a positive goal in your life rather than if, if, See, that's you're right though, because like I was gonna say, if comedy starts being a detriment, but like it could be. Yeah. You have a wife and a kid and you're going out to tell fucking stupid jokes to people. Mm-hmm. You know, like 
I get it though. I get where you're what you're saying. It's different in that you're trying there's a means to an end. You're doing that to try and get to a, yourself to a point where you can be profitable from comedy or mm-hmm. whatever or at least not lose money on it anymore. I know. Supporting these rooms gets expensive. Bro, uh, sometimes I don't go to my. What are you nervous of that? about? We're in the in your basement. It's just you and I. No, no I'm just worked up. <laughs> he just gets worked up. Yeah. Bro, I sweat. You, he sweats I, profusely. One of the worst. The only people I know worse than me for sweating. Yeah. We go to shows and he's just fucking <laughs> dripping off of his nose and shit. You know who? Um, I I was like I saw somebody else do the same thing. Bill Goldberg. Yeah. Bill he, Goldberg does that in the ring when he's like in the ring cutting promos, just talking, bro. He's drenched, like his shirt and everything. And I'm like, oh, I you can get tell it. how fucking... well my set. I think my set is going by how much I sweat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I'm having a good set, I don't sweat at all. Really, mm. I'll get like a little bit of lip, you know. But if I'm fucking just bombing, I'm just like. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, like, air, like, like airplane. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> bro. My my face, my face does that. Like my face is what gives up a bomb because I'm sweating the whole time. Uh, yeah, Either good or bad. My inside, my titties are sweating. I got shit I dripping down my just, nipples. You let the darkness in, and you get down on yourself bro. sometimes, and you. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but I, I I just get I, I even like even having conversations at work. Like if I go to a meeting with like three people and we're just talking, like it's not I'm in trouble, nobody's in trouble, we're just trying to figure something out. Mm-hmm. If I start talking, like my body like overheats and I just start sweating and I'm just like and then I then I feel a bead. And, and then it gets worse. Yes, yeah, bro. I do oh that. Oh my god. Once I get to a point where I think they can tell I'm sweating, then I One sweat bead, more. Bro. <laughs> One bead is all I need to feel. And I'm just like, oh, fuck. I'm gonna, how am I going to stop this? Like, is it going to be so obvious if I just... <laughs> yeah. No, I, can... I, I agree with that. One little fucking bead sets me off. That happened to me um, yesterday. I went into to a meeting with the CFO and the vice president of sales and the controller. And they were just asking me questions about something that happened. Like... One of my customers, they were complaining. And now they're like, this guy's guilty. He's smelling so like, like a motherfucker. Yeah, in here. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, they were. They asked me a question. And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I was like, well, what happened was, and I, I literally, as soon as I started talking, I was like, oh, fuck, here we go. And then I'm like, trying to talk, trying not to think, trying not to thought, like, and then I'm like, oh, and then like, and then if I look at somebody and I see their eye gaze, like hit like a bead of sweat. You're overthinking that. Bro, that's why <laughs> the sweat fucking drips like crazy. I don't know what to do. I was just gonna. Yeah. I used to sweat bad in my pits. It's like um, when you can't get hard, and then you start thinking about, it and then it gets worse. Oh, never get harder you're again. Try- <laughs> you're trying. You're like, <laughs> come on, go. And then it's like gets smaller. Yeah, it retracts. <laughs> yeah. You're like, God damn. Like, come on, bro. You're not even gonna fucking yeah. work for me. You're like, nah. This is good. Don't don't get hard. You can't make me hard. Try to trick it. <laughs> <laughs> You ain't even that big anyway. That's why you're not. That's why you're gonna stay there. So you try to trick, the, like, like you're like you're challenging the girl now. You're like, you can't get me hard. Well, you just gotta make an emergency run to the gas station and get a get rhino the boner pill. pills. You ever use one of those? Uh, not a rhino one. I took something once, dude, and it made me so sensitive. I just came right away. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, whoa, this is too much. People, th- some people say they mix them with like steroids. You keep uh, syrup in this cup normally? No, I just took that out the cabinet. <laughs> I was like, syrup? <laughs> That's my syrup cup. I pour syrup on my pancakes. Right that, that kind of syrup? Ooh, not the scissor. I got a big bottle of scissor upstairs. <clears throat> Get leaned out. I haven't even opened that. I had it when... What the fuck did I get that syrup for? For this podcast right now. Oh, I got it for the <laughs> sweats. That's what I got it for. That fucking scissor sweats. It's the actual real stuff? What'd you get it for being sick? Pro, Yeah. I'm trying to think of the name. Promethazine? Something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's like a big red bottle. I think I got it for my strep throat. When I had strep. Yeah, why I'm are saying. we not drinking that out of styrofoam cups right now? I don't know. I don't know how to drink it. Like, you're supposed to just, just drink it? Just mix it with, like, Sprite? fucking Sprite or something. Bro, don't tell me that. Yeah. 
<laughs> he just. <laughs> Uh, in other news, uh, Vic Cedeno <laughs> had seven seizures <laughs> Right? Isn't that what makes all those motherfuckers get seizures? Uh, yeah, like but they're drinking it like fucking... How do you think you think they have doctors on payroll, right? Just writing scripts. Yeah. Like, here, just, the guy was just like, here, here write your own fucking yeah. scripts. And go fucking what are you, put he's like, scene, I need... Yes. I can't even do a little Wayne impression. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think of how I he was talks. waiting for you to try, bro. I was like, "How does he even talk? It's fucked up." But I'm not gonna even go. For what it. did you ever see the um when he did the deposition? Uh, uh-uh. uh, about video? what? Oh my god, he got sued for something, and they had they have a video. They put it on World Star because the video of the um the deposition got leaked, and the opposing lawyer is. Asking him. Posing him and fucking asking him questions. And every question he asks, he just has the most sarcastic answers. What the fuck you think? Huh? Is that really a question? Like, he just has the worst answers. Yes. No. And, like, the way he's looking at yeah. him, he's like, yes. No. I don't know. So, did he get off? Yeah. It was just, it's like, it's literally people sue people sometimes just to do that. To get them in court? Just to fuck with them. Like, Get them to It's not even in court, bro. You're in a conference room. You You just get sworn in. You got too much money if you're trying to do that. People just fuck with people. And because in discovery, you could find shit out. Like when you sue somebody and you do discovery. That's I think that's why um, Vanessa Bryant is suing. So she's suing the fucking helicopter people and the guy. The guy that's dead? That flew the helicopter? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, well I don't know if she's work? suing him. <laughs> I maybe I maybe I maybe I've misspoke that. Maybe she's just suing him because he was negligent, like he shouldn't have flown. Like that's what she's trying to say. That's but how do you sue a him. dead guy? No, she's suing the company ah. that, that that hired him. Got it. Or that ran him. But I that's fucking tough because how do you know like it was him that pushed it? You know what I mean? Like I yeah, I thought exactly. about this like when it first happened, I was like, it's gotta be fucking tough. Like, if you're flying VIP clients and you're, like, in a situation where you're like, oh, it's kind of iffy. And then he's like, come on, bro. We got to get to this game. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? I'm like, All Well, right. think about that. A bunch of nine people with a lot of money, obviously, flying mm-hmm. helicopter. How easy is it to shut them down? To tell them no? Yeah. Probably not very easy. These are people that with a lot of money and a lot of power. <laughs> They asked. They asked another pilot, the pilot that used to fly Kobe before him, and they asked, like they were talking to him, and he was like, "One of the hardest things, like for a pilot, is that you think these are missions, like you treat these like missions, like you have to complete the mission, and that's like getting from point A to point yeah. B." And then like the pre- like that's pressure on itself. Then you add the pressure of like a VIP client, and he's like, and then you add the pressure of Kobe Bryant. He's like that's another client altogether it's like those are decisions you probably you would probably you might make without even yeah. asking like oh, i gotta get him there you know what i mean like i could do it because they said the plane didn't i mean the helicopter didn't have any malfunction except for the pilot you know i i get it but it's really like we're not gonna know no there's no, there's no black box so to see what they were saying somebody's yeah like and what's the what's the end goal? Like, does his wife need more money? No, or that's like, what I mean. It, I like, don't think what it are was we about doing the money. Here? <laughs> I think it was about the investigation because when you do the right, lawsuit, she just wanted to see a third party investigation rather than the company like investigating in itself. Yeah. Like by doing the lawsuit, I, feel I like always you like when people. it's like you know somebody died we're gonna pay you blah 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 oh okay cool <laughs> like right? like that seems like that seems like a good price tag for whatever it well, was that happened <laughs> how much is it for I've, my mother uh, i felt like that about my debt sometimes <laughs> where i'm like all right you know i'm sorry you're gone but yeah this check is nice this helps this will help ease the pain yeah i can fucking blow my nose in it after i mobile deposit it you know, wipe my eyes with it a little bit. Yeah. I don't think you can mobile deposit a big ass check like that. Five thousand is the limit. Um, maybe? that might be the limit. I want to test that. Somebody sent me a fucking check for five thousand and one dollar. 
I used to doing freestyle. I used to get big checks because it was for like the whole event or whatever. Mm. So I could never mobile. It may even be three thousand. But how it do may you, be less. How do you take a picture of one of those big ass checks? <laughs> oh, like you oh, have to oh. stand. Yeah. Pretty high up. To- <laughs> Got it. That type of check. <laughs> I thought you meant a uh, high number no. on it. Big check. No, I'm talking about. You I never won one those of those big. Checks. You never got one of those fucking no. big checks. And they're just. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you know this. It's just. Uh, it's just fucking a symbol. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look at fucking. <laughs> you got remember Hadi Gomar had all of them in his trunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had all those fucking big ass yeah. checks. Imagine just showing up to the bank with that with big ass check. Just, bro, that's a skit. That is. Skit. That's a skit right there. You know who? You know who I've been doing uh, talking about skits with. For now, for a while, Chips Cooney. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Bro, that guy's out of his mind. We talk about, like, because um, he we talk about skits he wants to do, and then we just start. To, like, he told me about a skit he wanted to do, and then ever since then, we just talk about skits. And then all of our skits never have any lines. Like, we always just talk about skits where you do something, and then that's it. Like, that's the fucking bit. Like, he gives me... He gives me these bank pens a lot, right? And I'm, bro, he always has a PNC bank pen. Like, he's given me at least four already, and he's always got them. So I told him, I said, we should do a skit where you go to the bank, and, like, you look around. Like, you know, you're at the bank. You wait online. You get to the fucking teller. You look for a pen. You don't have it. She gives you one, and you're like, oh, thank you so much. Oh, this is a really nice pen. And then, like, you leave. You go home. You get on the bus, like the bus ride home. You get home, you open the door. When you go inside your house, like every time you open a drawer, just pens just keep falling out. Yeah. Like he's just this old man with all these fucking pens in his house. He's just fit, but he never has anyone and in just, his place else. No, he just likes to hoard pens, bro. He's a fucking pen hoarder. But then, you, but with Chip, you can't ask too many questions about the fucking skit. Yeah. All right. When he tells you the fucking skit, and then I'm like, but also, like, he did this. I'm like, no, he just fucking did that. That's the end of the skit. <laughs> I'm like trying to understand the fucking psychology behind what he's saying, and he doesn't fucking care. He's like, no, that's just the skin. He just did that. He's uh, funny because he obviously doesn't get technology, so he's always asking me to fix his phone and shit. And yo, Look how do this. I post this? Do you see his story recently? It says, I texted, or you could text the link with the link to the event. So mm-hmm. he put the whole text. It says, or you could, <laughs> or you could post the link Screenshot. with the link yeah. under it. And so I'm it's like, fucking personal well, that kind of works. <laughs> 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 I like, I guess that works. He always does that shit with fucking, for those of you that don't know, we're talking about the legendary Chips Cooney. You could put his name in a fucking YouTube search, a Google search, and then just enjoy the amount of fucking hilarious videos that you're going to see. That video he has with um, Steve Harvey on his couch. Know, you ever seen that? No. Oh, my God. But he cracks Steve Harvey up. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because, like, he just, it's his mannerisms. Like, he just does this thing where he's on fucking character, and and the way he, like, looks around, and he plays, like, these really yeah. cool subtleties and shit, and then, like, Steve's, like, um, he's like, how old are you, Chips? You know, he hits him on the, he's like, how old are you, Chips? And Chips is like. He won't answer. He's like, he goes like that, and then Steve's like, he's like, what's the matter? And Steve's like, fucking Chips is doing this fucking head shake shit with his eyes, like, fucking scared like a rabbit. Like, he's like. Telling him, and then Chips, and Steve's like, Steve doesn't know what he's talking about. He's like, he's like, what? And then fucking Chips leans in and whispers something into his ear, and fucking this guy just starts dying laughing. <laughs> and then he comes back, and he's like, Chips told me he doesn't want to tell me his age because his girlfriend's in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> he's like trying to tell him to kill the fucking yeah. bit, and then he does fucking his car tricks to him. He does all those fucking car tricks, man. He's a fucking trip. He told me a story that he did that um, act. He'd been doing this act for over 20 years. Mm. And for the first time, he said one time in Vermont, he was doing a show for all Indians, for all Hindus. And they didn't get it. They just thought he was a bad magician. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He's like, they didn't get it. He kept going. They didn't get it. <laughs> Pointing to the dot on his forehead. He's like, they didn't get it. It's like, you got to fucking play to the audience, bro. You got to play to the dot. The yeah, who the special. fuck, if you're not uh, Indian, how the fuck are you going to know Indian jokes? They, yeah, bro, they, <laughs> they stopped him. They stopped him in the act. They took all, like, they helped him clean his stuff off the stage. And got on. the guy's like, what are you doing? What, what, what were you doing? He's like, it's my act. Like, it's comedy. 
And he's like, no, no, no. it's bad magic. These are Indian Indians. <laughs> yeah. Like they must have been fresh off the boat. Yeah, because you figure after fucking meeting Vishnu that Indians have pretty good sense of humor. Right. As well. There's like how many in this scene? Jitten, Vishnu. Know, Jitten. Who's uh, Jitten? Um, he's funny too. He Where's drives he like some sick ass BMW. Oh, he's got too much money to be. I'm like, what are you doing this for? <laughs> you obviously do something that makes you a lot of money. Like, what the fuck are you doing? I here? know, bro. Support the rooms. Um, there's another dude, uh, Rishi. Um, and I think there's another. So there's like four or five four f- Indian dudes right in bro, like North Jersey. That's how they roll, bro. That's how they roll. That was Vishnu that started that shit. You know they all live together. Probably they all live together. They're gonna try to get their comedy. Get, they're gonna take over comedy. Like yo, gas actually, stations, he's bro. on a full Hindu uh, show. I've seen a few of those. And yeah, I'm just like I don't know anybody else. I know Harisi the Raman. There you and go. I know, That's who I was saying. And I know. Uh, I put a sh on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just know see the ramen because I I always I tell myself see the ramen noodle. Like that's how I remember his fucking name. Uh-huh. See the ramen noodle. I did that for the fucking World Series of Comedy last year. And he loved it. No, no, no. no. I just that's how I remember to say his uh, name. I didn't want to fuck his name up. Did you get an email? They want to do that shit again. That World Series of Comedy. Uh, no, I'm sure James got it. No, I know. I talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. He thinks it's a scam. Yeah, I didn't. Get they it. changed the name. Now it's not a one night event. Now it's a showcase. And people were complaining about the judging, apparently, from those shows. Yeah. So now they want you to record the entire show and submit it so they can judge it. Yeah. No, they <clears> want you to record the entire show, chop up each person's set. And send them to them individually, and then they'll judge it and determine who the winner yeah, is. Yeah, sounds like a lot of extra work for not I very know. much money. For just we a free spot, like sixty bucks. I didn't make any money. I got we made the sold fucking... enough uh, spots. Yeah, that, yeah, I made my my own in, uh, submission. But I had a good time. Like I thought it was like a cool event to do. Yeah, and it was good. Like for Nikki, we fucking packed the shit out of that fucking place. And it was fun for that night. I was just, I don't know. I don't remember what I did last year. How much, like, I just feel like now they moved up the date. Now it's in May because they moved Boston up to, like, September or something. So I just don't know. I was thinking about it. I might ask Nikki, but I know Vishnu asked me if I was doing it again. And he wants to do it again. I just don't, I don't know. Maybe I don't want to do the work. It wasn't that much fucking work until... But now, if you got to record it and chop it, I mean, then it is what it is. It is yeah. what it is. I obviously am not. Uh, uh, that's not that hard either. Just it. sitting down, you could probably do that in a half hour. That I'm not worried too much. What I'm worried about more is like, um, just talking myself out of things, like I always do. Like if I want to do something, here's an interesting just, topic that, um, what you just said. Talking uh, myself out resistance you do that all the time and i didn't i thought that you were joking for the longest time Mm -mm. like the time i hosted your show at nikki's and then he's like i'm not i'm not uh i'm not going up and i'm like uh (laughs) (laughs) i'm like okay (laughs) my own show i didn't want to go up on my own he's like i'm not going no i'm not he wasn't on the list so i'm like "Uh, you're not uh, going and he's like nah 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 so then, like, I just go by the list. And then when we get done, he goes, good. I didn't want to have to go. Like, it was still an option had I pushed him. But I didn't realize he needed me to be like, no, you're going up. So Did I, I just. Did not go up that night? No. Oh, my God. And you laughed after when you got done. You were like, oh, I'm so relieved. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, like That's sickness, bro. That's I'm reading that fucking book again. The War of Art. You ever, hear, you ever read that? Or hear Art of it? War? No, no, no. War of Art. It's uh, Stephen Pressfield. He wrote a book. He's a writer, and it's for writers. That's why I don't know about him. Yeah, and it's um, it's about like the blot, like the resistance that you face, like how resistance talks you out of doing shit. Like the more resistance you fa- like face <clears throat> when you're trying to do something, the more you probably should be doing that. Like the more that's the fucking. Well, I will say this, and I really, I know everybody gives me shit in the comedy community because i relate everything back to riding dirt bikes but 
How dare you? It's all I fucking you use your know. Experience. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm in trouble because my experience happened to be something cool. Fuck your successful yeah. past. <laughs> all right, Clint. Yeah. If you did something less cool, we'd be totally fine with your references. But yeah, yeah. you're just bragging no, now. Fuck that. That shit's cool as hell. That's the use only that. thing. That's the what I'm still at this point the best. I don't even do it anymore. But in my life, that's what I'm the best at. And um. That's what I've learned all my life experiences from, you know, for the most part. So what I was saying is that anytime I got, especially like learning the backflip, which was huge, daunting, like this is why, which I remember, reminds me, I don't ever do it anymore. But one of my first jokes was that people I've known forever, when I tell them, they knew that I did freestyle motocross. People that don't know on Vic's side, I jumped dirt bikes for a living for like 16 years. Um, and people that I've known forever would, when I go like, I'm getting in the comedy, they go, aren't you afraid to get in front of those people? And I'm like, you do grasp, you know, like be like, they're just going to not laugh at me and my feelings will be hurt, yeah. but tomorrow I'll be able to walk. Like, yeah. it's not going to be. So I kind of weighed out the risks that way. So to me, it's not, it sucks when you bomb, mm -hmm. but like I said, you know, being knocking yourself out and the wind out of you and breaking your leg or whatever and laying on the floor wow. that also hurts your <laughs> your pride as well so you have both there compounded i'll just take the pride yeah. beatings fine you know i'm okay with that yeah. so i was learning to flip and i was flipping all day into the pit good ones right to my wheels to my wheels to my wheels get stuck and it's fucking hot and the foam pit sucks dick everybody's mm. like oh i'm like Go ahead. They fucking suck. Yeah, it probably takes so much fucking energy to get out of the motherfucking thing. They have to, you gotta, you know, if you get stuck, especially you're under your bike, if they have blocks, some of them have like foam blocks, you'll go 10 feet down in that thing and be stuck, stuck. Like I was just telling this show last oh, night, my God. I got stuck underneath them upside down. I was riding with an iPod at the time mm -hmm. and I get totally upside down go all the way down in the foam i can't even move my arm my hands off my handlebars to touch my face i'm so packed into the foam oh, i'm totally shit. upside down my ipod switches to some crazy fucking um pink floyd song <laughs> <laughs> as soon as i get stuck the first thing i'm like awesome and i'm like oh. ah! so uh, they pull me out I'm claustrophobic. That makes me fucking shit. Dude, I was, I'm not really that bad, and I was freaking out. And um, my friend's like, that can't be your last flip, because it was the end of the day, and we were getting ready to go, and it was going to be. And he's like, that can't be your last flip. And I knew that, but it was like so <laughs> defeating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he even says he was sitting on top of the foam pit, and I was got my helmet on and stuff, and I had my goggles, and he said he just saw me take a deep breath, and he goes... He's about to do something he does not want to do. And on that next flip, I learned something. Mm -hmm. I pulled it all the way to the wheels and I learned something. And one, if I had walked away from that day, not doing that last flip and my last flip had been getting stuck upside down, yeah, next that would have been my feeling. Yeah. I would have had months to sit there and have that be the feeling that I carried around. Yep. Versus I pushed through that little bit where anytime it's gotten easy to quit, where like you're at a point where you can re you're going to have to gut it out or you could just say fuck it. Mm. Whenever I've gutted it out, I've always gotten some kind of reward. And that day I left there with a good feeling about it and I don't remember what it was, but I learned something in my pull. Like mm. I actually figured something clicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was very close to walking away. You know, but like I said, my friend was like, you can't, that's not the last one. You yeah, can't yeah. do that. You've well, landed them would've... all day long and now you got stuck. Yeah. And I was like, you so that, defeated. You, that would have been all you taken away from the day would have been, forget about all the ones you made. Yeah. It would have been everything you did. Oh wrong. yeah. My head would have played that one over and over and over and over and over and over. And then that would have become, feeling. you would have stayed with that feeling. And I would have had that feeling inside about a backflip. Mm -hmm. And it would have made it so much harder the next time. But I was already there and I was like, no, he's totally right. I need to suck it up right now and just do it. And like I said, I learned something. And um, then I left there like, yeah, like <laughs> yeah, good feeling. Calm, like, yeah. Ready to do it the next time. More confident. Back up for one sec. Because you said something before when you fell. Like you were saying, comparing like falling and breaking down. Like that hurts your pride too. Like when you were laying there hurt. 
Were you thinking about how bad you felt physically, or were you thinking about what you fucked up? Like, what happens in that moment? Are, you, are you talking about in front of a crowd or just in a field by yourself? No, no. When in the field by yourself, you know, but when you're like in a crowd, like you're in a show, yeah, you feel like a fucking asshole. But does like, that? <laughs> does that? But does that feeling? Is that feeling more than the pain at that moment? I've had it depends on how bad the pain is I suppose <laughs> like how bad did you just hurt yourself yeah. but um man they're all different it's like did I mess up or did I have a mechanical mm. or you know stuff like that but I I definitely god man rolling out there and then just especially right off of the bat fucking yourself up and then getting mm. carried off like you just know everybody in that stadium thinks you're douche like you're yeah. like this guy sucks <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is, is you can change and then nobody knows that it was you yeah. you can walk Dude, you'd around you'd be surprised they talk shit little bastards the uh, other motor riders or the um no the fans, fans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no because we all know we've all yeah, crashed yeah. ourselves you know so like we're like ah it's whatever but uh fan people don't you know how harsh fans Bro, are we think we know more than the so, fucking people that do it dude they so they just want to come up after and <laughs> fuck you're it. supposed to pull the clutch bro you never pulled the clutch yeah i run by the ramp like three times before i hit it and they're like what's up why didn't you just hit the ramp you scared oh, and i'm like oh i'm like did you see at the end where i did the backflip you fucking <laughs> shithead like bro people are so miserable <laughs> They just want to fucking share that shit. No, they need to shoot you, especially, yeah, so you, can you be know, where they are. And it's the same vein here. I did something that I liked from 21. So everybody always wanted to shit on it in some way or another. Like you're just playing around or you can't do that forever or, you know what I mean? Oh, but you always get like, there was always something trying to pop your bubble reason to be like, yeah, but, and I'm like, how many people like that do you still have in your life? I mean, I've cut most that. of What do you mean? Just be shitty like, about it? Yeah, like you I've just, just cut them all out. Yeah, bro. I don't have <laughs> nobody in my life yeah. like that. I have like my best friends since I was little. Like they'll clown sh stupid shit. Yeah. But like when it comes time to like support shit and yeah. like be supportive, like I don't have anybody that's like, oh, you know, like that just wants to shit. That's on you at that point if you keep them around, right? Yeah. If for you sure. still have somebody that every time you go to them with something good, I mean, here's the thing: like, my dad is a negative person. Mm -hmm. His first response to anything you say is like, "Why it won't work?" But that's my dad, and mm -hmm. I understand that, mm -hmm. and I kind of you can uh, manage that relationship. And I don't go to him with everything because I do have a lot of crazy ideas that don't ever work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And some that will. And that's just the type of person I am. I'm always like, I think sometimes people, because I do rattle a lot, lot of stuff off and a lot of things I'd like to do, but it's like I'm spitballing and I have the energy at the moment, you know, and I get excited about stuff. And mm -hmm. sometimes they're stupid ideas. We all have that. I have so many. Yeah. So exactly. So <laughs> I just kind of like uh mitigate that before I go to him. I know like if it's a good one and it's kind of working out, then I tell him. But if it's yeah. like some kind yeah, of I'm like, like yeah, this is not gonna <laughs> I know. I think my wife thinks I'm like Ralph Grant. <laughs> like, oh god, not another one. Yeah. You know, so like some the point now. It kind of it's kind of good though because I evaluate the shit that I bring to her now. Like before I bring it to her, like I really, because I know she's gonna pick it apart. Yeah. But not negatively, like rationally. Yeah. Because when she knows I'm emotional, so when I feel something, like I feel like it's good, or I'm like, uh, you know. But like, doesn't that suck when somebody's like? It's the worst. Put the holes in it. I hate that, bro. <laughs> I hate that with a passion. I Why? honestly don't. Um, Depends what kind of holes, though. No, I agree. But still, like, in my head, a lot of times things would could work. Mm. And I get really, I'm like, ah, but, you know, and sometimes I'll still pick something up and try to run with it. Because once you get to a point where it actually seems feasible, then all of a sudden everybody's going to <clears throat> not everybody but 90 percent of people don't like change and are, don't are, and are not forward thinking enough for you to go to them with something that's totally abstract mm. that may be a good idea but because they've never seen it or know anything about it they're like 
it's not going to work right mm. off of the bat. You know, or people are restricted to their own like thoughts, like their own yeah. imagination. Well, how about this? The the whole once Instagram goes away, then all your modeling career is over. Like yeah. you're a fake Instagram model. Well, they're making real cash, and sure. there's real followers, and that's like saying, listen, once the internet TV gets any bigger, TV's going away. So you better say, yeah. oh, once all those TV stars. How are you doing a show for? <laughs> once TV's gone, all those TV stars are going to be nothing. Yeah, yeah. They're going to be sitting home. Like, it's just a stupid, because you have it on your phone in an app. It's not, yeah. it's not it's a tangible no thing. Still, to this day, it's no respect. Because it's, again, people being closed-minded to where we're, div- where we're <clears throat> going. Our TVs and our computers are going to be the same fucking thing. But look at Fashion Nova. Fashion Nova. I don't Nova even know is, what that is. You don't even know what Fashion Nova is? It's a, it's, no. it's a clothing company that doesn't have one store. It's just online. And it's a billion-dollar fucking company. Yeah. It just all all on the back of influencers, just Wait, giving them. Once clothes. your fake store goes away, yeah. you don't even have a building, <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> Where's your flagship? You don't even have a flagship store. I think they just have offices, and that's it. It's a new building, a new business premise that we don't understand, yeah. so it sucks. We don't fucking sell clothes. Look at <laughs> Until fucking, they make a billion dollars, and then yeah. you go, oh fuck. Look at fucking Uber. Uber's fucking a billion dollar company that has zero cars. <clears throat> you, that that's another joke right They're like uh oh uber you're having these random people pick you up like before we had taxis mm-hmm. why would you call which have to pick you random up? fucking people co- picking you up like I, what are you talking about <laughs> it's, the <same> thing, right? <laughs> it's the exact same thing they have a tax id number they bought right? they bought the license to drive the taxi driver license so basically your car's a special color the people are more trustworthy because they paid the government for the right to drive people around so yeah. obviously yeah they're in cahoots with the government they gotta be trustworthy <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know like look up how many people were fucking killed by taxi drivers over the years you're not any better oh, no. like it's not any better i don't know the number now <laughs> dude there's Jamie, so Jamie, many up. guaranteed how many people killed by taxis? Oh, my neck hurts. What are we guessing? What are we guessing? I mean, uh, w- uh, I'm saying 25 a year. 25. According to the Centers of Disease Control, I don't know why they had this. Accidents on the Centers are the fifth leading cause of death in the transportation accident. Oh, this is fucking stupid. All right. I can't look shit up. I'm not good at this. We just want just numbers. Just people. numbers. Bro. I think. What do you mean go live? I am live. Am I not? I think I want to start an app for like borrowing clothes from people. And just send people. Dirty it's just clothes. a reminder that it'll just be like it'll just start like that, but it will end up just being this creepy dudes trying to get girls panties. <laughs> <laughs> you it can just be a reminder to you. It'll be like, hey, remember you lent. Jackie, your shirt. Oh man, <laughs> it's been a week. That bitch hasn't given it back. There's so many examples of that. Fucking social media gets no respect at all, bro. So I'm not coming back. I'm just gonna stay off. So you're media. gonna social media. You're mad. Social media gets no respect. So you're not gonna respect it. It's not gonna respect it, bro. <laughs> just you're just part of the fucking problem. It. I'm just gonna ignore it, like everybody else. I'm gonna. I want to get. Look, I already got it. Where is it? Bam! Look at this. Yeah, but what is that Sorry, for? You're no, using your, you're phones. filming us with your big fancy phone, and yeah, then you got a flip it. phone no, to pretend like. like this. <laughs> does that even work? No, this is a prepaid phone from when I was doing uh, phone scams, and um, we used to call people in Utah and Arizona uh-huh. with this and do what to get leads for what? What are you they, talking about? Phone scams? We used to. I used to work at a company where we used to sell um, scams, business plans, not extended warranties. Business plans. You fucking dick. Business plans, <laughs> corporations, uh-huh. logos, websites. We used to sell it to old people that wanted to start online businesses, and we would just charge them an exuberant amount of money for services that were like you could do yourself. <laughs> if you and knew. Like business plans. We'd give people like cookie cutter business plan, like just the fucking template. You just fill in with their names uh-huh. and their information. It's like, here's your business plan. And 
I think I was shut down by the FTC. So many people went to jail for that shit. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. I got out. I got out <laughs> such a good time, bro. It was fucked up, bro. That that shit is so big that when I first started working in it, we used to have the entire 60th floor of the Empire State Building. Wow. Like, just dedicated to fucking salesmen, like an HR department, a fulfilled department. Like, it was a fucking... They ended up buying 1-800-Accountant. Like, that's how big Oh, uh, yeah. Was it a room accountant. full of Indians? Because every time nope. I get a call about... Nope. Uh, Mostly white Jewish kids from the city. Yeah, every time <laughs> I get a call, it's fucking... Um, those it's, are the IRS scam dudes. It's the fucking Vishnu. Yeah, fucking Vishnu trying and his to sell cousin. Me a fucking website or something. Trying to fucking, they're trying to get that um, uh, IRS scams they have. What's the other one? All oh, the Microsoft scams where they tell you that your fucking computer's fucked yeah. up yeah. and they, they need to renew some shit. And then they, they tell you that you're going to get money and then they want to send you the money. So what they do is yeah. they pull up this fake screen. And, and you log your shit account. in and they fucking get no, it. No, no, they they show you a fake they they show you their account. Like, look, we're showing you our account that we're transferring you that money. And then they show it and then they say that they accidentally sent you too much. And that you need to send it back to them, the balance. Mm-hmm. So they say, All right, we're gonna give you five hundred dollars. Oh, we accidentally sent you five thousand. Just send us forty five hundred back. And they show these fake things to make it look like they sent mm. it to you. And I watched these fucking YouTube videos of hackers that bait them and sit there and keep them on the phone. And while they keep them on the phone, they hack their computers. They delete all their files. Yeah. They fucking put like dicks all over. It. <laughs> they change all their icons to dicks. They fucking lock their system keys and shit. Like, do those they not fucked up. have anything to do? Bro, those people <laughs> fucking just sit in India and fucking crank calls out and fucking love cows. That's it. Uh, no, but the fucking, the other scam, it was mostly fucking Jewish kids from fucking Brooklyn. And we used to call. It people. was basically like boiler room. Yes. <laughs> exactly that. Aggressive phone sales, fucking hard closes, like fucking banging people out for ABC. five, ten grand. Yeah, always be close. Bro, all that shit. I used to watch Boiler Room like three times Such a week, a good bro. Mo- <laughs> yeah, bro. It used to get me so psyched. Are those drugs? <laughs> yeah. Bro, people would OD in the bathroom. It was a fucking At your mad. job? Yes, bro. People would OD. You'd constantly see needles and syringes in the garbage. You'd go in there. There'd be like coke dust still on the fucking counters. Like that place was... People would be on the phone. Come on, Susan. You know you. You know you gotta like just fucking aggressive closing sales. Yeah, go outside, smoke seven cigarettes, come back in, get on another fucking call, fucking close. We bro, need to was, make that a skit, bro. That shit used to be insane. Then they got um they got raided. Well, they didn't get raided. They got uh, sued by the FTC. They had to lay people off, so they laid a bunch of us off. And then my friend at the time that decided he was gonna start his own shit. And I was already enjoying my fucking... I didn't like that job as much anyway. I just thought it was easy money. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. I had to work 80 fucking hours a week. I was always in the fucking city. And I was barely... Like, I wasn't good at it. I was I was good at the, the pitch. And I could close. But if I couldn't close, I couldn't... I didn't have stamina like those guys just to be on fucking just, call after yeah. call and fucking chasing this I didn't have you I didn't, didn't want do, like I'm going to You gym. didn't have cocaine. <laughs> yes, I was not <laughs> to, Exactly. I'm smoking weed so I was just like, eh. I'm over this, man. Eh. I don't really uh, I wasn't even smoking weed at the time. I was a fucking I was in uh in drug court. I was state man. I was in a fucking state program doing fucking phone scams. Thank God the FTC didn't fucking come down on them that fucking time. Then we started our own shit in Clifton. And we got this little fucking spot, and we grew from 11 people to 65 people in six months. And we went from, I think the first week's, the first week's sales, I think we did like 55 grand the first week with 11 people. And then the, we got, by the time I left, it was at like 2.8 million a week. <laughs> Yo, let's get 11, 11 hungry comedians 
and just make everybody just cold make, call all worth, kinds of restaurants to get us. It's not worth it. Those we'll motherfuckers like, are in jail now. 400 bucks. We'll come and do a comedy show at your <laughs> restaurant. And we just call every restaurant right? in the fucking. Do fucking boiler room. Yeah. <laughs> Try to close people on fucking. On setting up. No, we're, you. No, listen, you need the upgrade of Chips yeah. Cooney. Yeah. You're, it's only 125 <laughs> extra. It's only 125 extra. Come on. You need the. Chipsies. I love fucking chips. They got fucked up, man. The, um, I ended up having a falling out with my friend there. I was like, I wasn't sales there. There I was uh, the chief. I was the chief. What the fuck was it? Chief. Oh, chief administrative officer. CAO. Mm-hmm. I was the chief administrative officer and uh, director of HR. And so I just did all the hiring. I did all the construction, renovation. We took this fucking guy's building that was just not our building. And we fucking gutted it. And we fucking remodeled it. Put brand new floors. Fucking glass conference room. Bro, and then he got mad at me. Like, I was trying to budget things. When he told me to buy furniture, I bought, like, pull-out tables. I got used furniture. So just we could set up tables. And he just hated it. He's like, this looks so stupid. Like, he wanted shit fancy. So I got fancy. And spent like sixty grand, and then they got mad at me because we didn't have the money. I'm like, but you wanted all this nice shit. Yeah. Like, where do you know you can't fucking be in the middle? I got fucking. You wanted bathrooms and a sheet, bro. He the guy wanted a fucking shower downstairs, but that's what he did. Like, he took money out of the fucking the business. Yeah. Like within the first three months, he took money out of the business, bought a Ferrari, he bought a fucking Jeep, um, Cherokee, and then tricked it out, put fucking paint on it. He had a fucking black Jaguar. Bro, this, he just went fucking crazy yeah. buying fucking cars and shit. And then we didn't have money to pay payroll when fucking. Um, that sounds like a, a team I, I uh, managed the freestyle part of in North Carolina. Just get fucking money and just get stupid. <laughs> so the guy would. Uh, there was a, a arena cross team. So you have super crosses, races and big stadiums and arena crosses, obviously, in like hockey arenas. Mm hmm. So we had an arena cross team and I had already had my freestyle motocross team. I already booked shows pretty much all year. I had ramps, everything. So I ended up moving down to North Carolina and I managed the freestyle motocross team of the deal and they managed the race team. Well, they made their race budget on the premise that their riders, four riders, two different series, everybody would finish top three every round. And I'm like, that's a stupid fucking business model. <laughs> <laughs> like, like one guy gets hurt and now you're yeah. down. How fucking cocky what, are you? Well, yeah, <laughs> like we're for sure top three every round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that didn't happen. Some people got hurt, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> they weren't making any money. I'm the only thing because the accountant lady I was friends with. She's like, you're the only thing that's generated money on this side of the team. Because I already knew I'd already run it for several years so i knew exactly what the prices in and out were and everything and how to make money on it so she's like you're the only thing that's fucking generating any money like i was paying everybody else's bills basically and my um i was get i would get a salary and then my rider money was going into the business account along with he was paying the payments on my ramp truck and then he was getting all of the money from ramp rental and my rider money was going into account and it was supposed to be there when I wanted it. Well, when I realized things were going south and I went to the account and I was like, give me my 12 grand out of there. She goes, there's not enough money. Now, in this building, there was Empire Homes, mm. some kind of window company. There was a street bike race team. There was a, a motocross uh, accessory retailer upstairs and there was the motocross team. There was not 12 grand between every fucking account to give me. So it turns out later after the whole thing folded, uh, the guy that was our mechanic at that deal sent me this video and it's a video of the owner. The it's a news clip and it's like, uh, whatever the fuck his name is. Something Deweese, uh, Mark Deweese fucking, uh, is taking these big down payments from people to build houses and never doing anything. 25, 50 grand. And then just, so like when the they signed a big gear deal, um, they got sixty grand from the gear company. He his wife got a car, and his daughter's uh, Christian school got new bleachers. 
man of, a man of the fucking <laughs> a man of the cloth. Oh yeah, he was a pa- he was a pastor or something. Of course, dude. That was so. The, here's my first time realizing, and I'm probably twenty three at the time. And I'm down there, and he we go for a ride to go somewhere, and he goes, uh, starts talking about faith and this and that, and he's like, "What's you know, blah blah blah, mean to you or something or being a Christian?" And I said, "I get you know, like being a good person and treating people how." you know you want to be treated whatever no getting over that's exactly (laughs) he literally turns to me and goes no and i was like huh and he's like no that's not what it says and bob and he was basically like like, each his own that's what the bible says yeah yeah on your own just go at the end go sorry jesus you know what i mean i didn't mean to and you're all good i guess the people this fucker had a theater in his in his basement Bro, the people that believe that are dangerous. He's he was fucking dangerous. Once I realized, I was like, "Yo, this guy." Then we get down to the nitty gritty. Now he's he's screwed me out of twelve fucking grand. He starts sending me messages for a hundred and sixty dollar fucking camera that the company bought, and I'm like, "Uh, what?" <laughs> like. He, and he's go, oh, come, come after you, this and that. And I said, okay, do you want me to add up? I was fronting all the money for the fuel. I said, do you want me to add up all the interest on my credit card that I uh, accrued from paying for your fucking fuel? And then I stopped getting messages. You know, but I'm like. <laughs> Wait, what did he want from you? A camera, a digital you camera, a camera? $160 camera with the, bit, with the company's money, wow. 160 Dude fucking stole 12 grand from me. Wants me to return the $160 camera. I'm like, suck my dick. Oh, he was hurting. <laughs> <laughs> suck my dick. He How could, about that? <laughs> he couldn't pay that bill. He should have sold his Bitcoin. That's yeah. what he should have did. That'll fucking get your bills paid. Yeah. But so you never got the 12 grand? Fuck no. Damn. Bro. Shit was gone. I fuck fucking it. stole like a couple of things. Some exhaust for my mini bike and shit like that. Yeah, that's the only way to get even in real life. I... Ugh. That's what you gotta do. That's what I got. I got even with um when I used to work at a gas station. I used to work at a gas station, and um they passed me on a promotion, so I just started stealing shit. <laughs> 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 I really, yeah, bro. I genuinely convinced myself that like it was that okay. Was right. yeah, yeah, like that was the right thing to do. Like yeah. that's like, like, like they owed it to me. I would just steal lottery tickets like a fiend, bro. You ever win? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> I I worked overnight, right? So I worked the fucking third shift. So I was the overnight guy right on Route 46, that BP gas station. Uh-huh. I fucking opened that place with the original general manager when corporate BP owned it, not some fucking Pakistani. It was just some fucking, it was corporate BP. Uh, they came from fucking Britain or wherever the fuck. And the guy that, the guy that, um, that opened it, the first general manager was a former uh, sheriff. Right. So he was like, you know, one of those fucking hardline people. So they passed me on a promotion for some Indian guy. And then I was, they made me the assistant manager on third shift. So I would do all of the inventory numbers. And then one day, like, I just, I don't know how it started. I took a lottery ticket. Cause I got, I don't know. I was like mad or some shit. I'm fucking, I'm gonna take this fucking lottery ticket, scratch this shit off. I like, didn't get shit. Take another one. Look at the scratches on your shit. So I was like, all right. Then I fucking took a, like, just fucking grabbed the whole thing. Boom. And I took him home. And then I, when I went home, I scratched and I won fucking like $500 all or right. something. And I was like, oh shit. And I was like, all right. I'm on to something here. I had two fucking scams going at the place. I was stealing the lottery tickets and then I was keeping the money from the coffee. And that's like the main thing that they were getting. So what I would do is no matter what anybody fucking, no matter what size coffee somebody it got, it was a dollar. Uh. Just give me, And then people, everybody that gave me cash, I wouldn't ring the coffee up. I'd just put it in the till. And then at the end of the night, when I did all my fucking till, I was over and whatever I was over, I would just keep. It was usually over like thirty dollars, twenty five dollars, yeah. bro. It's so many fucking people coming in for cups of coffee in the middle yeah. of the night, and they just say, "Yeah, just a dollar. It's just a dollar. Yeah, it's a dollar at night." <laughs> 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 they just give me the fucking dollar, and I was fucking pocketing it. And then um, I did that for like, like three weeks, 
right? The coffee scam I had gone for a while. The lottery, I was like three weeks in, and all of a sudden, we have a meeting, and um, they're going over the numbers because what I was doing was I was altering the lottery numbers at the end of the night to reflect that it was even, just the money didn't match, right? right? And then fucking he comes <laughs> One day, like, we had the meeting, and they were talking about it, and I was just like, oh, boy, jig is up. And then, then they didn't say anything in the meeting uh, to me. After the meeting, I went You were home. taking the high-dollar tickets, too, weren't you? You weren't taking Five dollars, the $5, the $10 <laughs> ones. Yeah, for sure. I would take, like, I, went, I remember taking some, giving them to my mom, like, because my mom, mom, yeah. I used to always come home with lottery tickets for her, so she, she didn't always fucking steal them. Yeah. And she's rocking them, and then um, one day they called me into the office, and uh, the guy's like, sit down. He's like, all right, so um, I know you've been stealing the lottery tickets. And I was like, hey, he's like, whoa, 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 before you even get defensive, I already know. We know we have video. It's everything. He's like, don't argue or it's going to get worse. So shut up. He's like, you're just fired. I'm not going to press charges unless you want to make this more of an issue than it already is. And I was like, nope, I'm all right. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking left. Or they're going to fucking charge me with like, I ended up getting, I ended up, that's the place I was working when I met the undercover cop, too. So, I, like, karma caught up to me anyway Yeah. on that shit. I ended up fucking getting popped for shit I did there, just not the fucking lottery tickets. I was a mess at that place, bro. So How this, old is this? How old are you? I'm 22, 23. But this is, like, the behavior that I'm talking about. Like, just, like, I'm smoking weed at work. I'm, like, leaving work, going around to the side. I'm just smoking weed right in front of the store. And then going back inside, like operating. And then I'm mad why they don't pick me to be the fucking manager of the store. Like I had, like I, I literally had the attitude like I was owed everything. <clears throat> well, that's how people don't want to put in extra work until they're getting paid for the extra work. But you're not going to get given extra work until you prove you can do extra work. Bro, I try to tell people that now, like at work. And people be like, well, they want me to do this. They're going to have to pay me extra money. Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, it doesn't work. That's not going to happen it. right off the bat. And then they yeah. pay you. <laughs> <laughs> if you do it and don't bitch all the time, then they'll yeah. be like, oh, this guy's good at this. We'll yes. fucking give him an extra whatever. Yeah. 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 Now, it's, it's so surprising how like entitled people are. And I, I know because I, I identify with this fucking feeling so much. Were you super angry as a young kid? Yeah. Me very. too. And I never knew why until I was in rehab, and it was I was angry at my dad because you're a gay. Yeah, that too. I'm hiding, <laughs> hiding. You had to hide it all, all the time. It gets stressful. I would be sitting there in class, and I'd be writing like this, and I'd just be writing, and then somebody would come behind like this, and they wouldn't see the dicks I was drawing. <laughs> hiding the gay. That's what made me mad. No, I was just mad. I was mad at my dad. I was mad at my dad for not being around, and. Before I knew anything about drug addiction, I just blamed it on him. Like, why didn't you stop doing drugs? Why couldn't you stop doing drugs if you loved me so much? Like, my family would always tell me, oh, your dad loved you so much. You were your dad's pride and joy. Your only Did your kid. dad pass away? Yeah, yeah, my dad died when I was six okay. from AIDS, from using oh, yeah. Yeah, from wow. dirty needles. Um, I mean, did, was he around up until that point? Yeah, he was always around. Okay. Yeah, no, I have... Great memories, like the little memories I do have of my dad, I have nothing but love. And the stories I have of my dad, like my dad in my family is like a hero. Uh -huh. Like every he used to help everybody with their problems. He used to go to Puerto Rico, fix my grandma's house, put new roof on it, add additions, like come back here. Like uh -huh. that's all he worked for was family, like my uncles, my aunts, everybody. Like if you had a problem, my dad would help you. Like that's who he was. And we, you know, I kind of feel like having that pressure on you could lead you to more drugs and yeah. shit like that. And, um, you know, you fucking shared a needle and that's it. That was a, that time. Here's my theory eight. on drug addiction. Um, and I could be wrong, but I feel like, and I guess it doesn't work across the board, but people are not happy uh, ultimately. And I realize this is the only hole in the argument is a lot of rich, famous people end up, you know, dying from drug overdoses and stuff. But I feel like a lot of times but they aren't happy either. Money don't fucking make you happy. Like people are miserable. But too. I mean, my thing is, I think a lot of it is not doing what you love. People are trapped into these 
fucking jobs that it's just that's it this is yep. the next 40 years of your life and it's like you chose it daunting bro that is fucking <clears throat> daunting that's a fucking i'm not that type of person uh, i never have i started at 21 i started my own freestyle team mm -hmm. super fortunate to realize early on and be at the crossroads of freestyle where it just started like today i never would have gotten in because it's so gnarly it was a much lower level mm -hmm. but i was able to see a path and make a business out of it i forgot where the fuck i was going with addiction that. oh about not so, being happy I had, um, <clears throat> early on I had injuries obviously. And then I started getting into pills and eating them. And I it just got to a point where I was like, this is not allowing me to be as good as I want to be riding or mm -hmm. business wise on that whole side. So that was the deterrent mm -hmm. for me was because I had other things that were more important to me than getting fucked up on pills. And I think a lot of people, <clears throat> are doing stuff just to pay their bills so they don't have that love for it. So like you find Jesus something shit. else exactly. Mm -hmm. So you end up going down that path. And that's not to say that. And I've had friends that rode one guy that that was his full job that got hooked, but, and his issue, he still wasn't happy because he felt like he should have been further along and more famous, gotten invited to bigger contests and this and that. Mm. But there was also what you were saying before. There was a discrepancy between what he wanted to do and the effort he was putting in. And he didn't grasp that himself. And so the things compound. I'm not getting this and blah, blah, blah. And then he just went further down the drug addiction road, you know. Mm. And I think a lot of it is that is not being happy with life. What you're doing, you don't feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be every aspect of your life. You know, because you You're might have a something. good family or a good job or you have one or the other, but you don't have, there's still one thing, like you said, that's really like bothering you. Mm. Yeah, no, like I, I really didn't know anything about addiction. So like, that's why I was so resentful towards my dad. And then when I went to fucking rehab, when I got out of state prison by going to fucking rehab and spending six months with fucking legit drug addicts. Not even. A lot of them were just like me, getting out of prison. A lot of kids from Trenton, mm -hmm. Camden, um, Union. Um, just All good neighborhoods. Yeah, all wonderful I've... fucking people. <laughs> They're wonderful people. And they... It was like a lot of people were escaping it, but for me, like, drug addiction, a lot of people do, like get into it like that, but um, you know, a lot of people say drug addiction is a disease um, where, I mean, a lot of people debate that shit. I don't know. Like, I I really convinced myself that I was a drug addict. I really had, once I got in there and I, like, I was evaluating my behavior and the things I was doing. But there's some people that it's, like, beyond grasp. Like, people, like, I've seen so many people that just fuck everything up yeah they fuck everything up and they continue to fuck everything up and they're just like on a blazing path where it's man some people just addiction is just fucked up like that where people you don't you can't really put a finger on it you can't put a finger well like if i just change this like i would be better like it's you're like spiritually broken like you have to go through like this spiritual experience through the 12 steps, which I did. I did all fucking 12 steps. I had a sponsor. I was in fucking um, group meetings. Uh, I used to run groups. I used to do speaking engagements. Like that's why I got so comfortable on stage in comedy was because I was already been talking to fucking. I was already airing out my own dirty laundry. In what front of were people. you in rehab for? We bro. I I got sentenced to four years in prison, 18 month stipulation for selling weed to an undercover cop. Jeez. Three ounces, three separate occasions. And the fucking thing that got me was because I was in a school zone. And that's a mandatory minimum. Thank you, Joe Biden. And that has to, like, the, you have to do time. Like, the prosecutor was like, I, there's nothing I can do. Like, there's no deal that you can make. Like, the fucking law. So, what, how much did you do? You. So I got four years, 18 months. They got me out of it by giving me this new program called Drug Court where they were giving people chances to, you know, that had drug problems, like a way out of prison trying to like not 
just pe- you know just not keep putting people in prison. So, so you were in drug court for a certain amount of time, like, and that went towards yeah, your sentence, basically. Drug court is an alternative. My sentence hung over my head the entire five years. If you were to fuck up, if I were to then. fuck up, that sentence was waiting for me. Until I finish. Which is fair because it doesn't even the amount of uh, time that you put into that <laughs> would have. so fair. <laughs> if you did two years yeah. in drug court, right? And then fucked up after I've two years. Him. They're like, guess I've what? Seen five four, years. I've seen them four the years in. Two years should at least go towards no. your. <laughs> no. I've seen them five years in. Uh, I mean, four years in, bro. At the end. And then and then, just... then just get caught, man. And it's, bro. You know, they, and how does that help? Once you, you've now gone through all that you slip up once right and mm-hmm. now you're in jail for how long and when you mm-hmm. come out what the fuck do you have a better education in crime yeah to keep yeah. you from doing that stuff because now you're can now you're further removed from working your uh resume now says that you're a fucking felon or whatever <laughs> trying this to this gap <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. you just didn't you work for five years what happened here i see you worked for the state of new jersey yeah. <laughs> in what capacity exactly <laughs> i made license plates no, um, you know, for all the shit I talk about what happened to me, like that was actually the best thing in the world that happened to me because after like, after I got out and I was just like, all right, I'm not an addict, you know, I can go back to fucking being me. Like I, I'm finished a thing. It made me grow up, right? It gave me structure. Before that, my mom lived in Florida. I had nobody up here. I was just depending on other people to fucking do for me. I couldn't do anything for myself because I always had people doing things for me and it helped me because they they put you through such a fucking ringer, All right? Check this out. I, I spent two weeks in county jail because I had to wait for a bed. They're like, we don't know how long a bed it's going to take for a bed to open up. You could be here a day. You could be here six months waiting for a bed, you know? And that six months would count towards if the time I spent in jail would count and the right. time I spent in rehab counts as time because that, while I was in rehab, if I, if I left, if I walked out, because there was no gates or anything, I could just walk out the fucking front door. That, the minute I walk out the front door, that counts as a, a state prison charge. Jeez. That would, They would mail you the same way. Uh, like That's the deal you sign up for. If you yeah. leave the rehab without being, you know, we're going to trust you in here, but if you leave without it, it's, they're going to charge you with escaping prison. So, Because technically... Technically, you are. They're you're allowing, escaping custody. but they're just allowing you to be there instead of in yeah, a, in a, exactly. You're still in. You're still in state custody. So I did the two weeks in the county jail. Then I got transferred to Sea Caucus Turning Point, and I did six months there. And um, when I got out, I had to do. Um, I had to go to court every Thursday. It was drug court. Every Thursday, you go to court at one o'clock. You piss test and then you sit in court with everybody else that's in drug court and you wait for the judge. And then when the judge calls you up, they fucking review your case every week. All right. What have you been doing? You got a job. Have you been doing this? How many meetings you going to? Do you have a sponsor? Like those were, you know, um, requisites of the program. So you had going to drug court once a week. I had probation once a week on Monday. I had a random call in line on Fridays. So every Friday morning when I woke up, I had to call this number. And if my name or my last name letter or my fucking color that I was wearing, like whatever the fucking random shit might be, I would have to go in for a random drug test. Then I had to do three outpatient. Re- and then I had to do outpatient rehab for another six months after. So I was doing outpatient three times a week at night in fucking Englewood. This is all without a license because my license is suspended for six months. My license is suspended for one year, but six months inside counted. So then I only had six months to do without a license afterwards. So I was bussing it everywhere. Mm -hmm. I had to have a job on the books. No fucking off the books jobs. You had to have a job on the books. Um, And then what else? You had to go to three meetings every single week. You had to get a sponsor and you had to fill out these sheets at the meetings. And then they had to sign them at the meetings to go to. So like that was a fucking... Like you go out and you don't have time to think about getting high. Like that's the point. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you don't, they don't want you to have time to get thinking high. And I doing feel like the point shit. is they put all these things so that if you miss one thing, then they can fucking push you through the cycle. They could ban, you know what the, for their, their, um, for them, it was the, the probation officers did care. They were good. Like they weren't just there. Like these people were part of this program and the the program was to help people and not put people in prison. Like this was like if we, every time they put you in prison, that's a failure on them. Right. You know what I mean? So they kept you like they would try to keep you on track. 
and people would slip up. I had I got locked up twice for stupid shit because like I forgot what? to go to probation. Uh. <laughs> Bro, I right, I do this whole rigorous <clears throat> schedule. I tell you, my life before that was a life of leisure. Then I do this whole fucking rigorous schedule. I get out, I'm doing all this stuff. And I'm like, I want to say like almost probably like a year and a half into the program, like a year out. And I'm, you know, as you progress and you go through phases, there's four phases of drug court. First phase is that stuff. And then the second phase, they take away um, uh, two drug court appearances. So now you go every other Thursday and then you reduce the amount of outpatients. So like as you progress, they took more stuff away from you. So I was like in the middle. And then I was working as a telemarketer doing fucking the police scams where they're like, yeah, we work for, uh, calling on behalf of the Police Benevolent Association for donations and shit where they only give like 10% to the organization and they fucking right. pocket the rest. And I'm working at this telemarketing place and I get a job with my aunt, like an official company, Fortune 500 Plastic Manufacturer. I'm going to get into their uh, pricing department. I got an entry level position, fucking Twenty-seven thousand dollars a year benefits, but I'm in right. Mm -hmm. I'm in an office environment, first time working like in a fucking real office, and um, they're cool with the whole schedule. They're cool with my drug court. They know I'm a fucking felon, and then I get that job. And you know how like you try to put like a week buffer in between so you could relax like in between jobs. So I did that. That you, that, that was enough. No, no, because. The Monday, the first Monday on my week off, this is my first week off without anything to do in a year and a half after being a lazy bum for so long. So all I thought about was this whole week, I don't have anything to do. This is going to be so cool. So Monday comes, I don't do anything. Tuesday comes. Tuesday morning, I wake up. I go to wash my face in the morning after waking up, and I go to brush my teeth. And when I wash my face, I look in the mirror, and I'm like, fuck, I forgot to go to probation yesterday. I just no-showed probation. <laughs> I just completely abandoned my yeah. fucking responsibilities because I was so happy that I had a week yeah. not to do anything. I just didn't go, and I called my probation officer immediately. Like, Sorry, bro. They're, yeah, they like, if you don't go, it's the same as using. It's the same as a dirty urine because that's what they feel like you're doing. They can't trust drug. You can't trust drug addicts at yeah, all. Yeah, but the bro. next day. The next day. Because coke will get out of your system like that. Well, Coke is like 97 hours or whatever. It's no, three it's like days. Fucking, I think it's quick. I think it's, it's three days. Quick. You could do something in 24 hours. Either way, they were just like, this is the fucking yeah. rule. And I had to do a weekend in fucking jail. See, if you're on that type of stuff, you just eat mushrooms because that uh, um just shows up as it food poisoning. Anything, right? It's just food poisoning. Oh, shit. I never know that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if you're in drug court, don't fucking do that shit. Yeah. Do the program and fix your fucking life, bro. Allegedly, you can take two hits every Sunday as well and still piss clean. Oh, really? For weed? Two hits every Sunday, still piss clean. I would never fucking try. Because you know why? Because I would have never been able to stop at fucking two hits every fucking They're Sunday. Are you kidding me? I, been... <laughs> <laughs> I could do this two hits every night yeah. and it's not going to oh, show you're up. you're holding them shits till you pass out. Bro, people got caught using Wizenators yeah. there. They got caught fucking um, putting their thumb. I guess they put like bleach and stuff. They, they, the guy would just watch you. Yeah. Like, there was no fucking pissing by oh, yourself. Yeah. No, they that's how I was in a um, pre-trial intervention. I tried to get that, bro. They didn't and, give it to uh, me. They're like, you're not eligible. This is a mandatory. I'm like, come on, bro. Yeah. Let's fucking lead. <clears throat> I went. That's how I went to court. My first arraignment, I had corn rolls all the way down my back, like halfway down my back. I so went you were Arnold. Up. Yes, I was on, bro. Yes, <laughs> yes, I was Arnold Peter I to the see fucking you T, like bro. That. Bro, to the T. You never seen none of my fucking gangster pictures uh, with bandanas on nothing? Oh, no, my God, I don't think so. Bro. Listen, I pretended to be from the places my mom worked hard to move out of. Like, that's the fucking yeah. hypocrisy of it all. Like, my mom worked so hard to keep me out of the places I pretended to be from. Like, that was the fucking worst part. Like, my mom, I wonder what my mom fucking thought. Like, you, <laughs> you yeah. fucking asshole. Like, if you, if I wanted you to grow up like this, I could have just fucking stayed in the yeah. Bronx and had more money for myself. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't have to, she didn't have to bust her ass to move us to fucking Carlstadt or fucking Hasbrook Heights. It was probably cheaper. Hell no, it wasn't cheaper. In the Bronx? Bro. Yeah. Because the Bronx was slums then or what? Bro, because <laughs> it's the fucking Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like anything in New York is automatically more now, expensive. Now, not back in the fucking 90s. Not before fucking Giuliani. 
Yeah. Right before Giuliani swept the fucking bro. We used to go to my grandma's house in the Bronx, and people would used to walk up to the car with bags of drugs like this. As you pulled onto the blocks, they'd come out like this, and my mom would be like that. They'd see our jersey plates, and that's what they. My grandma lived on a fucking drug corner, right? So we'd get there, and they'd throw. It's an intersection like this with a dead end. And then this street's a one way, and then this street comes in. So right here on this freaking intersection on the T, there was a whole row of Jamaicans right there selling fucking whatever the fuck. And then this whole street down here was all abandoned buildings, fucking... Bro, I used to be terrified of as a kid. That used to look like fucking the haunted forest. Like looking down that block, like I would never go down that block. I wasn't allowed to go outside at all. When I stayed with my grandma for like a summer... Mm-hmm. Wasn't allowed to go outside at all because my mom had nobody to watch me. Yeah. You know, so I had to go stay with fucking grandma in the Bronx, but I couldn't walk to the store. I couldn't go downstairs. I used to sit in the window like this. And then even that was fucking dangerous. Yeah. Shooting. Just fucking, yeah. All of a sudden, just fucking Jamaican guys just start fucking shooting at something. They love fucking shooting in the sky too. Forget it, bro. That shit was fucking dangerous. I got a good shooting in the sky story. Yeah. I want to hear it. Um, we were in Shreveport, Louisiana at a, a monster truck show mm. and we got done and the, um, we just hung out like the, it was the second night or the last night. So then the monster truck guys got to take all the tires off of their trucks and stuff and put these little teeny tires on them so that they can put them into the trailers. Cause like with the little tires, they barely clear. There's like eight inches on each side. Six I was inches wondering on how they side. fucking transport. They those take big the tires off, off. Then yeah, they yeah. roll the tires. They usually have like a lift at the back. So it'll pick it up and then they mm-hmm. roll it in and then they'll have like a lift where they put it in and it'll lift the first ones up in the air. And then you can put the second set of tires underneath it. Mm. <clears throat> but they always break stuff. So they're doing that for hours. So we're just drinking beers, hanging out. Cause we like throw our bikes in the truck and, fold the ramps up and we're done Mm -hmm. so we're just sitting there drinking for hours and then the one uh monster truck driver uh of equalizer he's a redneck from virginia Mm -hmm. he's like uh some he said something about his pistol oh he just pulled it out he started showing us 45 check this thing out just got this well I had my pistol and so did my business partner had his pistol. So we're like, oh, fuck, we got our pistols, too. So we fucking go out and we're showing each other our guns and they're making fun of me because I got a nine millimeter. And then the uh, monster truck guy's like, boom, in the air. This is in the parking lot of the arena in Shreveport. He shoots in the air. And then my local just no, he's from Virginia. (laughs) This is in Louisiana. (laughs) Then um, my business partner's like his eyes go and he's like boom and i'm like well fuck it boom and i look over there's a security truck car sitting there with somebody in it like 50 yards away uh-huh. that has watched us drink for like the last three hours and he's you know he just hears that and he's like yeah i'm not gonna fuck <laughs> i don't want any part of that no. one <laughs> i ain't hear nothing <laughs> sorry boss have my radio up <laughs> then then mike's like you want to drive this you want to drive the monster truck so I get in there and try to, and he's like, pull it in the, tr- in the trailer. And I'm like, I'm wasted. And <laughs> I've never yeah. driven a monster truck. <laughs> and this is like one of those full race ones. <laughs> I said, pull it in the yeah. fucking. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those full race ones that you've been to a monster truck show. Mm-hmm. And they idle, they either. just go rah, rah. So the thing is just lurching around. Oh, and I'm shit. like, yo, I, <laughs> I don't want any part of this trying to put it in your trailer, dude. I'm <laughs> fucking fuck go through the wall or something what's it look like inside one of those fucking things just fucking frame yeah there's nothing in there. no. there's no fucking just it's all stick to it. panel um well no there'll be a, um just automatic yeah oh, okay um what kind of trucks do they use for that well so the motor the frames are just custom frames oh okay uh, so it's not like it's, they take a fucking no fuck stock no. ford or some no, shit no. okay it's it's full roll cages top to bottom the shocks on the things are this tall. They've got like two on each on each tire. Mm. The motors are the same motors as like a John Force Dragster, like a alcohol burning funny car. Same engine. They're like twelve hundred uh, horsepower, thirteen hundred horsepower. They're fucking gnarly, dude. They'll spin all four. You know, see how big those tires are. All four just. Oh, we had a um ride monster truck, so it was actually Bigfoot Seven, mm. but they took the um alcohol motor out of it and they put just a um like a 460 ford in it 
and we had uh, seats in the back. So it was a ride truck. So people would pay us whatever, 10 bucks to sit uh, in the back and I'd drive them around. Yeah. And then after driving that, I had the rear steer and stuff. So the back wheels turn. Oh, Otherwise, shit. you'd be like K turning and fucking like a bit football field. And, so uh, what is that? Like another wheel on the side? No, there's just a toggle switch. So oh. um, you push it to the side, whichever way you want to go. And then um, you want um, the switch to recenter. So you want one that you can push it and let go and it'll go back to center and straighten you back Not, out. You don't have to manually. Yeah, because we've had fun. ones. Exactly. Yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. get stuck sideways <laughs> and you're like. Arr, arr. <laughs> but after that, I was like, dude, now I want to drive one with the with the alcohol motors because they're they're kind of cool. Like uh-huh. I, the one we had was an old. It had old leaf springs. It was like a dump truck fucking leaf springs in it. It was so hard. They, What's a leaf spring? Like the um, just a bent spring. There's like a couple of them. Uh-huh. So like most cars have, they either have coil springs, which is a wound I up saw spring. The, okay. And a leaf spring is like a bent bar. And then your axle would mount at the bottom. So that oh, whole okay. spring goes like this. Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this was like big ass dump truck leaf springs from fucking the 70s or something. So it rode like a tank, dude. It didn't. No give. At all. So <laughs> I so I um had actually blew my shoulder apart, broke my femur. I wasn't riding. I hit my head real bad. Don't remember like a week. And then, so then to generate money, I was running the uh, monster truck. So then we sold this one show where I was going to crush a car with it. Mm-hmm. So I rolled over the car and then they're like, go faster over it. So I go the next time I get on, it, I'm like, Bwah! and I get off of the fucking car and it drops and then it goes boom and just smokes. I had a helmet on. Thank God. Now I've already had a bad concussion like a yeah. couple months Fuck before that. Yeah. You know, and I just go Wah! against uh. the roll cage right behind me. And I'm seriously like. Trying to figure out what the fuck. And all I did was drive over like two cars. And when I came off it so hard, it just the the bottom hitting because it was just bonk. And I'm just wow. Next thing you know, I'm like, holy fuck. And almost went out. Like I fucking kind of got a flash. And I'm like, we ain't driving this thing over anything anymore. (laughs) It's fucking rough. Yo, but you see fucking people jump those things. Well, that's. They got the big shocks this tall, like big gas shocks. Like they're not. That's going to be like a fucking car accident every time. Like um, being in a car accident to your body. No. Not. No? not like the same. They're jolt. getting not uh, with those. I wouldn't say maybe if you land upside down or something or land on your frame, then it's direct hit. But figure how much those tires absorb. And then mm. the, they have like four foot of suspension travel. So. Mm. Because I, I, f- I forgot who described it to me. They were talking about a car accident. And, oh, the my wife's doctor. Uh, when my wife got into a car accident, um, she was trying to figure out why she was so fucked up. Because it, was it wasn't a bad accident. Like, she was pulling out of a lot in the bank. And somebody just came across the, <clears throat> the freaking, you know, the parking spaces mm-hmm. in, like, an empty lot. And just fucking smacked her from the side. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't a hard hit like a car just had like minor damage they were in the parking lot speed you know and the but the um the doctor was like the reason why you're so fucked up is like when you get hit when the car hits you like that energy just transfers through the car goes right through your body and out like the energy has nowhere to go so it just fucking travels right through you and then that shit fucks you up so like in my mind i'm seeing a fucking constant hit. I mean for sure they get a little bit but I wouldn't say it's like a I Not mean like maybe it is accident. like a car accident I do have a friend that does car stunts mm-hmm. and he'll jump a car 160 feet into a row of parked cars he's got a roll cage in there yeah, yeah but still. yo that's what I'm like Holy you're shit. every weekend is the somebody's worst accident. fucking nightmare you know yeah well because they say people can get CTE <clears throat> yeah from- just from the whip yeah, yeah. No, well, like, um, what the fuck is that called? Wave running. Yeah. Like the just skipping on the well, waves. Well, your brain is now you're getting into my fucking realm. Yeah, of you're getting that fucking rattle, right? Uh, your brain is the consistency of toothpaste. Mm-hmm. And most concussion, a concussion is where your brain will slap against the side of your skull. Mm-hmm. And that causes a bruise. That's essentially what a concussion is. Yeah, we got that little fucking, what is that? Like Membrane. Layer, right? Yeah, exactly. We're not um, woodpeckers. Right. And, um, yeah, they say that real small ones just all the time also cause it. 
you know, as mm. well as big ones. Joke. So that's yeah, like yeah. my friend that does the car stuff. You're rattling your brain for sure. You can't stop that hard, even in a harness no. and all even, that shit. Yeah, your brain is still in, slapping right? around inside your head. They get I've, strapped in that stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah he's yeah. Hans. I mean, 160 feet. He, he's, yeah. He, he has a personal pod um, roll cage that we got to cut the passengers. He has to have a two door uh, or a four door, I mean. And we cut the beam in between the two passenger side doors. Peel the whole side of the car down, take everything out, all the interior, and then wedge the um, uh, pod in there. The pod in there around the steering wheel, so the steering wheel's inside it. Bolt it to the ground, put like an outrigger on it, and then you know his um harness and everything is bolted to the cage and the seat and stuff. Hmm. But uh, I've given myself concussions from like landing on my ass. So hard. Didn't even hit my head. Just mm. landed on my ass hard enough for the Fucking snap shit. back. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, fuck, dude, fuck. I'm wrong. You know, and I didn't even hit my head. I think I gave myself a concussion fucking here one time coming down these fucking stairs mm -hmm. where like, bro, I don't know how I go down those stairs all the time. And then just one time I was going down the stairs and I was like in a bad mood or like angry. So I was like walking with like some serious fucking vigor down the stairs. And all of a sudden I just like mid step was like crack. And I just remember, like you said, like everything yeah. was like white. I was like, holy shit, bro. I fucking just stood there and I was like, fuck, bro. I had a headache for like three days. Yeah. You probably just caught it in the right spot. Yeah. It was like, bro, the fucking corner. It's the corner. Yeah. Like that hit me right on top. I'm like, how the f bro? I had to be jumping yeah. to like get hit there. I've tried to like recreate it walking uh. normal, like trying to walk <laughs> soft. Like, how do you do that, bro? I must have been airborne. Like my fucking anger uh, yeah. propelled me forward, like off the step, and I just fucking cracked it. And I'm like, fuck, uh, man. Uh. That and the only other concussion I ever got was when I was a kid. I held my breath too long in fifth Passed grade. Out. And fucking passed out. I was holding my breath, and then I was doing that thing where you make yourself red. Yeah. I was doing that, and then all of a sudden I woke Blew. up. I woke up. No, no, no. I didn't remember passing out. Yeah. I just was doing that, and then I woke up with my mom over me, and they were taking me on the gurney out of the school. And I was on my way to the fucking you probably smoked the your ambulance. dome when you fucking I hit, hit I cracked, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hit my head on the brick wall Yeah, that was behind me. And then they told me that I had a heart murmur. Oh yeah, you told me. How, yeah, I was like, just trip you out more. Ten years old, and like I never, I never looked at it again. I guess that shit heals. That's like something that goes away or something. Did you play sports? Maybe yeah, built it up enough. Yeah, I did. Um, I did fucking little league, bro. Shit, yeah, little intense league, intense cardio. <laughs> <laughs> just standing in the outfield picking dandelions, <laughs> bro. You know where's not the place to do that? Shortstop. What, just look around? Yeah, look shit's around, coming bro. too fast. Bro, I saw a fucking kid get his head split from a fucking line drive. I bet. Because he wasn't paying attention. And this fucking, bro, the hit changed his life. Yeah. Like, He's I remember. Slower. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Not that he was slower, <laughs> but like his fucking, um, I remember he had like, he ended up having a scar and it was just, he was just like, I like, I don't think it changed him. It changed my relationship with him. Like, I just felt different about this yeah. fucking dude. I felt so well, bad. Felt he was, bad. Yeah, because he was in the... I'd never seen anything like that. He was in the fucking dirt. There was fucking blood everywhere, bro. His whole fucking yeah. shit was split. I was just like, I think it traumatized me more than him. Just fucking Probably. seeing that fucking shit, bro. No, I played um, I played basketball and shit, but I don't fucking know. I don't know. I think the heart memory just went away. I think it just was sealed by my good heart people tell me i have a good heart bro the guy was like he got a heart murmur but i was like i don't think so bro people say like, i got a good, good heart i don't think you're a good doctor my fucking ekg you don't like these chairs bro i know where <laughs> i'm the one gave them to you motherfucker where's the other two <laughs> they're right there <laughs> they're right there i'm gonna get another mic i want to get another one i was reading on um i have three i have three um ports on here if I get one more of these, I can have two guests at the same time. Oh, fuck. No, what I want to do is... I'm about um, to pee myself. Yeah, I know. I'm about to wrap this up. I want to put a TV here and do like... And like watch fights and yeah. stuff. And do like companion streams. Yeah. And like watch wrestling. Or just watch shit like that. Um. All right, yeah, let's wrap this up. I got to pee too. And um, go do some shit. Uh, 9.30. Are you going to a mic? Tonight? Yeah. No. No, no not tonight. Tomorrow is something. 
It's got to be not something tomorrow. City Lounge. It's not City Lounge. It's no. got to be not um, Wawa. Yeah. I think they moved it to Friday. Really? Because they're doing those Hell Yeah shows with the mic after. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah. know that it's this week. I don't know, man. It's too hard to keep up with fucking I thought what it was the mic same. is this week and that yeah, week. And... I probably won't do a mic tomorrow. I would like to do a mic tomorrow. I need to do more mics, bro. I, I need fucking, to do. I, <laughs> I got would... a show Friday, which is good. The show, a show and then Friday Saturday. Saturday. Good, yeah, that's yeah. good. Because I don't have shit warm before up. then. I need to get in some. Want to come with me Friday? Maybe. I might be able to get you up. Yeah, that'd be sick. Mike Where? Bonner in Cranberry. Is that close to you? Cranberry. Yeah. Maybe. Cranberry. It's on Route 130. Cranberry, the station, Bar and Grill. It's at 8 p.m. So Nothing's fucking, close to me, so probably not. That's a fucking good show. Bro, I'm so annoyed not, not being on social media. I'm like trying to text people like to buy fucking tickets. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like this is the fucking worst trying to promote the show, and I felt like that about uh, Laugh It Up Tuesday too. Like, I don't know if, if the the low crowds has been lack of social media, or is it because the pool players fucking ruin every show? I think. Uh, oh, that is kind of close to you. To oh, where no, you live? Never mind. It's all the way down here. It's further. All uh, right, I'm out here. And it's straight down. Cram- no, wait, it's that- not near any of us. I don't think that's that, that far, is it? Yeah, it might be. It is a fucking 45 minute ride from me. That's from here. here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about right. Cranberry Station Barn Grill. Um, that might not be. I got to look it up because they the, the GPS puts this other fucking Station Barn Grill on it. And you can get confused. We'll look it up. Let's wrap this bitch up. Clint, you got anything going on? We got our yeah, show Saturday, Saturday. Saturday, Looney with Chips Cooney. Hell uh, yeah. At um the Dojo of Comedy, aka Tiff's Comedy Club, aka Tiff's Grill and Ale House. I want to eat. So yeah, they got good food. I just yeah. had I was there this afternoon. We were working on the podcast studio upstairs. Mm-hmm. And uh I had a um grilled cheese with pulled pork on it. Bro, I, is that oh. the same place that this guy owns? The football player? Is it Tiffany's? No. That's Tiffany's. It's uh, a different place. Well, it used to be called Tiffany's. Ah. And then the jewelry store I heard made them change the name. That's why it's Tiff's now. Ah, mm-hmm. but Saragusa, Tony Saragusa was one of the original owners I don't or something. Know like that. football players. His father I used to go to is. 46. Yeah, they're all the same. Oh, but all maybe. Right. So they were. Maybe he owned one. Of, it was a franchise type deal. I don't know. Maybe he. I think owned he owns that one on Forty Six. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think he was like a partner or something. Gotcha. Um, but this Mike's dad is the original owner of all of them. And now that you say that, he has a bunch of like signed jerseys from all kinds of people, yeah. like football jerseys in the attic where I've been cleaning. Mm-hmm. I'll just pull out like, I'm like, what is, who? <laughs> <laughs> this fucking I'm never like, who the fuck is this? Rolled up, keeping yeah. the draft out. No, they're all framed <laughs> out. But like there's a literally a closet with like five players jerseys like framed up. And then there's a picture of. Him as a little kid with fucking Dan Marino and yeah. shit like that. Like, he's got all kinds of stuff yeah. out there. Yeah, I thought um, some shit. No, man, I've been there. I had my birthday there at the one on 46. I love their fucking macaroni and cheese, their baked macaroni and cheese with fucking that, um, the crumble on the top. Yeah. They put the... Um, I'll have to try it. They got fucking great ass cornbread. Cornbread crumbles. Oh, yeah? Oh, so good. And they serve a, a cornbread appetizer with butter with cinnamon on it. It's fucking amazing. They have fucking great food there. That place. I'll, um, you're going to meet Mike and everybody tomorrow, but um, the guy, Henry, that does the sound, uh, he and I are partnering on a April 19th uh, brunch. So 419 brunch because uh, it's a Sunday, 420 yeah, is on a Monday. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have all kinds of like chicken and waffles and have like crazy munchy fucking uh, nice. food. So I like it. And it's called Sunday Brunchies. Sunday Brunchies. So it's mixed between munchies and brunch. I like so it. we'll have uh, weed themed jokes and everything for that one. Nice. Weed themed shit. Um, so this weekend, yeah, come see us. Tiff's. Tiff's. Morris Plains. If you go on Eventbrite, you can get the tickets. Tickets are $15 online and 20 at the door. So 
Sweet deal that those those online tickets. Trying to get you don't um, have to worry about shit exactly. when you get there. Exactly. Trying to get a little bit of a um crowd ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So we're at like twenty so far. Nice. But that's you know good leading into it. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can get another squeeze out another five. Oh, and you didn't I send you a graphic with the thing well, wait, that yep. will show. Uh, the tickets are bought for me. Well, but it even shows how many times each link is visited. Oh. I was thinking in the future of doing like an incentive, like an extra 10 bucks for whoever's link gets looked at the most. Yeah. That way at least eyes. it's like they're trying to yeah. promote it. That's what's up. Any other shows? That's it. Um. Yeah. I mean, I stuff in April. I think April. Well, fourth, I'm doing the show at um, Broadway to try to. Um, oh, get past uh, try or whatever the deal yeah no, and then out. um cool? like the 28th audition? or something yeah audition mm. and then like the 28th i'm doing um rhino yeah yeah nice so uh grizel hit me up she's like yo can you do rhino she's and still I was booking like, yeah. it yeah that's Apparently, dope. or at least helping with it. Yeah, so my name. She's been back the and forth. <laughs> she's been back. Why'd you get banned? You didn't get banned, did I'm you? Dead. One no, one thousand percent. What did you do? You went I'm, to a mic. I'm a, a uh, no, no. I'm a I'm a um I'm a chauvinist. I'm a like a like how the a fuck am I? Uh, how uh, <laughs> they no. didn't hear any of my uh, the, feminism the, jokes. The huh? way I <laughs> the way it was relayed to me, I was booked on a show, mm-hmm. and then those. Every show lineup gets run by the owner and saw my name on it. was like, nope, not, not going to happen. So I was like, all right. I haven't been to open mics, but that's not the reason. Like, I wouldn't care. I would still go. I've only been to a handful of open yeah, mics. Yeah, I would still go to the open mics. It's just far and on a Saturday, on a exactly. Friday. I just didn't, you know, I'm just a bitch when it comes to I got to fucking do more shit. All my shit's 45 minutes to an hour. So that's hours kind of, especially for mics. That's kind of my uh, barrier, you yeah. know, like driving over an hour to fucking go. Oh, so that's right at the border. And that's a pay money. Yeah, that's yeah. at an hour. Uh, Olives at an hour. Like your house, 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, except for Tiff's is the closest. We ate it. Tiff's is 26 Tiff's minutes. This is nice for you. Huh? Yeah, oh, dude. It's fucking sick well, i hope that fucking place takes go takes off man it's going to they're doing the right thing. things we're working on some stuff so uh that's what's up man hey the fucking session went offline what happened here oh that sucks oh. we're off anyway yeah we're out anyway all right um that's it uh friday Friday, this Friday, the 28th, Station Bar and Grill, Cranberry, New Jersey. Saturday, Tiff's, Morris Plains. You already said it. I'm hosting. Um, and then, I don't know. I got some shit coming up maybe next week. I don't know. I'll talk about it next week. Thank you very much. Thanks, my man. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Peace. Later. Uh, I'm saying goodbye to a stream that's not even here. It's all right.